So yes, let me show you what I've made in Substance Painter. And this was just a test that was made from one of those flat out head textures. And I always wanted to know how do you wrap those around an object or around a DAS head. And that was, you, there's, there's several ways of doing that. So my, the, you can project it onto a plane and then use a software like Wrap or use Soft Wrap and Blender. And then you essentially go and have the face on the plane and you have your 3D object here and then you just wrap it around and then you transfer the texture. This wasn't a great example because she doesn't have ears on here and she has hair that drapes down. So that's not really something that's really all that useful if you want to transfer just the head texture. Usually people have their hair uh, up so that you can have that the cheeks and the ears and stuff will be projected as well. So, but I only had this one, so I thought I'm gonna go and uh, get going with that. And so you, the one option is to uh, project it, like wrap it on a on a wrap a plane around the head. You can also use a stencil and then rub it on and then move the stencil, move the 3D object, and do that. But I've done it in texture painting, in in uh, with warp projection. And can I remiss it in? in recent files, of course it's not. God, was it here? Yes, that's the one. And I had a, I had a lot of fun doing that because there's so many cool tools in Substance Painter that make that possible. So the warp projection is essentially uh, what you set up to project one image from one side, like so. And that kind of works, but it also then means when you look at it from the front, uh, you get some stretching. So you also then have to use either the same image and project it from the sides. And then if you want to also use the 45 degree angles and project it from there. And I've been able to make this. And the cool thing is that uh, it, you can do it with the height information as well, which is why we see some, some, uh, some skin detail here. Might be a little strong, but the cool thing is that you can go and uh, project it and then make changes to it. So if I go into that layer, we see all these vertices that I've added here manually. So you start with the plane, but then of course the eyes and the mouth don't line up. So you put the, the nose in the middle and that's, that's okay. But then the eyes are too tall and the, the mouth is in a different position. And then you add these little lines here, both horizontal as well as vertical. And then you go and drag these points around. So I think with this here, edit vertices. So if I if I look at the mouth now, and if I'm not happy with one of the mouth things, I'll go and select one of these and then just drag it out, thereby moving where that needs to go. Whoops. <laughs> Takes a while to think about it. But yeah, that is how you then line up the 2D picture with the, with the 3D object. So ideally you'd had something that really matches this is switched to something more of a high res uh, set so i can go and switch that to 1024 then the resolution is a little less but i can move this with a bit more performance here and it's already kind of fairly late into the into the process so if you if you make broader strokes broader changes that is really that's really enjoyable. And I thought, hey, this is going to be good on a whole uh, on a whole body, especially if you have a 3D scan that actually matches the body. Yes, it's kind of cool, Brian. I'll show you where that is. You have a, uh, if I just start from scratch, let me go. Oh yeah, this is a, this was one from the front. And then you go and do the same with a duplicate of the layers from the sides to get a different projection going here. We have a couple of minutes. I'll show you how to how to get started. So if I go and see, start with the, with the fill layer, of course. And I think in the fill layer, then you say you want to paint with color or and or height. And you pick out not the material, but the base color, which is. Oh, he hasn't got it anymore. Gotcha. <laughs> Let me go and import that. Duh. So add resources like this here. Make it a texture and put it into the current session. 
there it is so this is that so we go and drag that into the base color and then that looks terrible because it's everywhere but then i think with this tool here where it says uv projection you change that to warp projection and then it becomes it gets this cage here and that now means you can you can move it up or down you can change the projection depth and you can go and move it to where it needs to be scale it up or down a bit start with the broad whoops start with the broad strokes here scale the whole thing kind of down yes it's fascinating when i found it out i was thinking whoa this is really cool so like if we start with kind of the mouth and the nose and the eyes are not quite there so these are the tools here they're a bit like in uh, maya when you or in, in unreal engine w e and r switch between them so like i can probably do with scaling this kind of down a bit and then come back and line that up and then go back to scale and go and move this out somewhat and you kind of approximate where this goes but like if we stick with the mouth as an example say the mouth is good the eyes are not and you think well um they would need to be lower now but the mouth i don't want to touch the mouth and the nose needs to become lower and stuff so i think it could just come up a little well anyway so you can go and and add with this thing here you can go and split crosswise that that means like this or you have horizontal that's like that or vertical is like that so you use a, a line that you add in here and say just underneath the eyes here you now have another line that you can that you can fiddle with with this tool here so you switch that over to edit vertices and then you switch you grab one and then you move just the eyes down and you leave the rest intact while shifting things around so that's very cool and once you've done that you think hey maybe uh, the maybe the eyes can come out so then you can go and add like a vertical thing out here so where the texture kind of ends switch over to that and grab one eye and take it out and so that's that's how you do it essentially and then uh, projection depth you can increase that they say don't increase it too much because that seriously struggles with performance but that is that is really that's just like dynamite stuff i thought really cool and then once you've done that you can go and uh, duplicate this layer and in here you can go and just rotate where we're projecting from so you can go and project from this this angle now move it over maybe switch this layer off so that you see uh, what's going down and then you just go and blend these things together like this the eye isn't quite lined up properly so you can go and move that so then you don't have these striations on the side where the front projection would just go project straight pixels you now have a projection from the other side so ha 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 very cool and then you can see how this how this in conjunction with a regular paint layer on the top to fill out gaps that are uh, that are not working well how that can work really really well so i'm having tons of fun with this and i'm thinking i'd like to try a complete character with this so yeah this was my front projection and then i added the projection from the right that's this and then they all have masks in here and to make that really cool you can then have another one from 45 degrees from this angle so this is how this is why there's so many of these um, reference images that take pictures of a person from a turntable so that makes it really easy to line this up i mean it still is a ton of work but it is now possible to do this i was always very ambivalent about uh, using stencil painting for that while it works it's just like a ton of work to make that work right brian i thought so too <laughs>